Okay guys, I am here with my Extreme Rules 2012 predictions and this show only five matches announced and they have three hours to fill and one of the matches, Miz vs. Santino, is the 7.30 on YouTube live pre-show dark match. With only five matches on the card, I don't know why this is not on the actual card for the show and it's the dark match, but whatever. So I'm going to start with that and I would normally say that The Miz is going to lose. But it is for the US title and I think having a comedy character like Santino with the US title doesn't really help anyone. It's not helping him get over. It doesn't really help establish his character because he's always just going to be a comedy guy. So they should really put the belt on somebody who it can help. And I think in the case of The Miz it could help him and normally I wouldn't think a title could change hands on a dark match, but it seems like WWE wants to start doing this 7.30 YouTube pre-show thing, and having a title change hands could get people to watch it in the future. So I'm thinking that's their crazy logic, and that The Miz will beat Santino for the U.S. title. Then we have, um, you know, like I said, the five matches, so I'm going to assume possibly a tag match with Primo and Epico versus The Usos. Uh, maybe a Divas match. Apparently the injury that Beth Phoenix had on Monday Night Raw was indeed a work. That's at least what I've read as far as the most recent update is that it was a worked injury. The storyline being that this way Nikki Bella wins the title without actually beating Beth Phoenix for her to lose it. Then Nikki's going to lose to Karma and then Beth can challenge Karma for the belt without Karma having to beat Beth to get it. That's their booking plan as far as a few weeks back from what I read. So I believed the injury was a work and it looks like it was a work. Also in other news, just to throw this out there, apparently Big Andy, Silent Rage, has been released by WWE. So tough enough, man, they really create superstars because... <laughs> Every single one of them has really done nothing. And Andy didn't even get TV time. I think he had like two promos maybe of his personal life. And that was it. Never really was on the show at all. So yeah, Andy's apparently gone. And there goes Tough Enough. If they ever plan to do a season two, it's really going to be hard to get people interested when they know that whoever wins doesn't really go on to do anything. But as far as the matches on Extreme Rules, we have Big Show versus Cody Rhodes for the Intercontinental title. Now this match, um, they haven't announced like the stips or anything, probably won't until the day of the show. But I would have to say Big Show wins. I think Cody winning and getting the belt back just made this entire thing pointless. Because I think they should push the younger talent, but... If Cody wins, he gets the Intercontinental title back, and the only thing that changes is he can't say, I've had the Intercontinental title all these months. He actually loses that. So the only outcome is Cody getting hurt. Uh, he's either going to lose the match, or he's going to win the match, and then be stuck in the same place he was before Mania. So it doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to say Big Show wins here, and hopefully Cody can move on to the main event and maybe do some better stuff, hopefully. Um, so my prediction is Big Show wins this match. Randy Orton versus Kane, falls count anywhere. Who cares? Uh, I have to predict Orton winning this and ending this feud, finally ending it. Uh, Sheamus versus Daniel Bryan, two out of three falls for the world title. This match, I would love to see Daniel Bryan win and get the belt back, but I doubt that's going to happen. Uh, Sheamus will probably win the first round. Daniel Bryan wins the second. Uh, you can mix and match those all you want, and then Sheamus wins the third round. Um, he may even start the match off with a bro kick to Daniel Bryan and win the first one really quick, like in Mania. I hope not, but who knows. This match could even open the show with the way they've been treating the world title. Um, that wouldn't surprise me at all if this is the first match on the show. But 
I was talking to a friend of mine here on YouTube earlier today about just Sheamus, how he's so much better as a heel, and I really do prefer him as a heel, but I don't think they're going to turn him anytime soon because of all this anti-bullying uh, campaign stuff he's been doing. And I think that they want to push him up into Cena, Randy Orton territory as the future babyface of the company. But myself, a lot of other people, prefer Sheamus as a heel. And at times it feels like WWE is just determined to give the fans the opposite of what they want in every single category, every single time. Um, the Rock beating Cena shocked the hell out of me because I'm so used to them doing the opposite of what people actually want. So I predict Sheamus to win this match. Uh, CM Punk versus Chris Jericho in a Chicago street fight for the WWE title. Um, I'm going to have to say CM Punk wins this. I think Jericho is probably going to take the summer off, heal up, and then he's supposed to go on a big tour with Fozzie. I don't think this is going to go any further. This may be it for Jericho here. Now, this could be good if he had at least beaten Punk one time. But he hasn't beat him at all. So the only way they could really establish Jericho to keep this feud going is to give him the belt. But if he's not going to be around very long, he's just going to lose it at the next pay-per-view. And him having such a short reign is meaningless. It means nothing. So why even have Punk drop the belt to him at all? If they were going to do that, he should have dropped the belt to him months ago. So I think this is probably going to wrap this up. Sadly, no more Jericho. But I see Punk winning the belt here, or keeping the belt. Then we have Brock Lesnar versus John Cena in Extreme Rules. Now this match, this one's a little bit harder to predict. Because I'm sure WWE doesn't even know what they're going to do at this point. They're booking on the fly, and they probably are going to change their minds a ton of times between now and Sunday. I personally want Brock Lesnar to win. I'm sure everybody else does too. I've heard rumors that Cena's been made to look so bad. Lesnar laid him out twice. Um, Cena looks really scared. I have heard these rumors that because of all this buildup that Cena will win at Extreme Rules. But if they're going to keep Brock around, I just don't see the logic behind that. So I'm going to have to say that Lesnar goes out there. He's got the MMA trunks. It's Extreme Rules, and he beats the hell out of Cena. Possibly busts his lip open again and wins the match. Maybe even with some John Laurinaitis stuff. Who knows? But I'm going to have to say Lesnar wins this. I think, I mean, I have heard the rumors, and they make very good points that Cena could easily win this match, but I just, I have to believe that they are not that stupid to just completely kill Lesnar. Um, this would really hurt him for him to lose right now, and I just cannot fathom they would do something like this. So I'm really hoping that Lesnar does go over here. And that's Extreme Rules. Like I said, we got five matches, the dark match. So that's it, really. Those are my predictions for Extreme Rules. I will have a review up for the pay-per-view Sunday, um, of course. And uh, that's it. I hope you guys like this video, my predictions. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed. And leave your predictions in the comments. So thanks for watching. Bye.